What's up, everybody? Noah Kaser back here from my review of the brand new Hallmark Christmas film, A Royal Corgi Christmas. This is all about Prince Edmund who wants to give his mother a dog, a corgi as a gift, uh, which, after several disasters, turned uh, turns Cicely, played by Hunter King, an expert in dog training, uh, they they turn to her to basically train Mistletoe the dog. But she, she's not only training uh, him, she has to train the owner how to train him. They will discover that love can grow in unexpected places, questioning what they really want. This is a film that I was expecting to like, but I wasn't expecting to love this one. I was not expecting to love this one. Now, don't get me wrong. There are issues. There are issues here that really bog this film down a little bit in a critical sense. But for a fan, I loved this movie. I loved this movie. This might be one of the most pleasant, heartfelt films that actually delivers on emotion in a while. Because not only in the climax does something happen between a uh, a human being and a human being, between hu two human beings... But it also involves a dog who you get connected to because, let's be honest, there's been an animal that we've been connected to and something happens. Whether they pass away or uh, you you are fostering them and they got to go to a different home, there's something like that in almost everybody's uh, lives. This one is emotional, but this is one of the best films that Hallmark has put out this Christmas so far, I believe. Now... For what I had a problem with, it was the sister's lover, the dog trainer. Uh, or as they call him, the dog wrangler, the corgi wrangler. He was not used very well in this film. He was, he was basically the villain here. He was basically the bad guy. They kind of shoved that storyline away for a little bit. But then they bring it back at moments. And they don't do it enough to make it like, okay, it's obvious here's what's going to happen. But they kind of just shove that off where they don't really give you a good payoff for it. They kind of just do it. And then they just stray away from it and go into the next drama scene. A Royal Corgi Christmas does not have a very compelling or very well done villain, but what it does have is it has Hunter King and Jordan Renzo have tremendous chemistry. This gives you everything you want in a royal movie. It gives you the uh, the British. It gives you the British voices. It gives you the comfort. It gives you the charm. And they even have lore. They give you a story about why they call it the Christmas Castle. Instead of what it's actually called. But they call it the Christmas Castle. And they give you a nice story with that one as well. And that was very intriguing. And they did a nice job of giving it a reason. And, and instead of saying, okay, it's just the Christmas house. Or it's just the Christmas Castle. They give you a reason. And I enjoyed that. The chemistry between these two stars is phenomenal. I have loved, well, I've liked two of Hunter King's films. And I've loved one. She's three for three for me. And I've liked, if not loved, three of her films, and I cannot wait to see what she does next with Hallmark Channel. Give me more of her, please, and she maybe come up there with Lacey Jabert, because Lacey Jabert very, very rarely, and I mean very rarely, disappoints. Hunter King has yet to disappoint me. This has tremendous chemistry between these two stars, as well as it has puppies. How can you not like puppies? They're puppies. There's three corgis. There's... Jupiter? No. It's Juniper. Yes, Juniper, Holly, and Mistletoe. Mistletoe is adorable. Holly and Juniper we don't get a whole lot with, but these dogs do it. They, they did such a good job with these trained dogs that it was actually like they were acting. You could tell what they were saying. There was one scene at the very tail end uh, where one one character goes, our person. When he said, my person, then then he looks at, at the dog and goes, sorry, our person. And that, that, that dog's face was like, you're damn right, it's our person. 
th there's a certain winks and nods that dog owners will know, like, they are talking to you. They understand what you're saying. They're not stupid. They know what you're saying. This is a darn good film. I enjoyed this one overall. Definitely one that I'm going to watch over and over again every single year. I believe this will get a DVD release next year. And I got to go with a four and a half out of five on this one. I enjoyed this one overall. One of the best ones of the entire weekend for me. And I cannot wait to check out the last three that Hallmark put out this week. And I will be getting those reviews up for you tomorrow. So, A Royal Corgi Christmas. Very good film. Couple issues, but... The drama is just kind of thrown in there. They don't do a whole lot with it. They do a nice job with these dogs. The chemistry is there, but the film was not compelling. And it, it, it was just one where they're a villain to be a villain. And they don't really have a reason to be a villain. Uh, they're, they're just a villain to be a villain. There's my review. This did very well for what I think a, a Friday film does for Hallmark Channel with a 1.98. Not as bad as Hashtag Xmas with 1.51, which was kind of the fault of the marketing team on that one, but also the fault of it being a 6 p.m. premiere. Because some people because some people are, 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 are not even home from work yet. Some people aren't even home from work at 6 o'clock to watch this. So there you go, everybody. There is my review of A Royal Corgi Christmas. I will see all of you guys next time for my review of uh, a, t a Tale of Two Christmases, Christmas Cookie Catastrophe, and a Holiday Spectacular, but also a review of the Netflix film Lady Chatterley's Lover. I will see all of you guys next time.